Greetings and welcome, friends. Uh, Mr. Wadi here and my fellow geometricians. We are actually preparing for a test today. So I'm going to go quickly, swiftly, if I might, through this homework batch of problems. Uh, it says, show that the quadrilateral with the given vertices is a trapezoid. Decide whether it is isosceles. Uh, so in order to determine that, we should look at the slope of uh, two sides and be able to show that exactly two sides are parallel. It looks like I could say that about these. These are vertically oriented of one another. If I did find the slope of, say, I don't know, uh, yz, man, yeah, this one's got a lot of formulas because of the coordinate geometry. Uh, the slope of yz would be something like 3 minus 9 over negative 3 minus negative 3, and we'll see that as 0 will appear in the debottomator and that is undefined. Uh, and both of those have undefined slopes. They are parallel to each other. We would have to also show that these are not parallel to each other, because if those happen to be parallel, it would be a parallelogram, which is not a trapezoid. So the slope of xy, uh, yeah, this one we'll do graphically. How about, yeah. Uh, so this looks like down 1 over 4. Beep, beep. Right, so that's uh, negative one-fourth. Uh, the slope of ZW, or WZ, is up one over four. Man, that's the saddest, saddest line I ever drew. Uh, one-four segment, I suppose. And notice that those are not the same, so those are not parallel. So it is, conclusion, a trapezoid. Trapezoid. Bam, I like it. All right, uh, they did ask us to decide whether or not it was isosceles, um, which would mean I would be analyzing these legs and trying to determine if their distances are the same and therefore congruent by def of conch. Uh, so we'll do one distance formula real quick. Uh, let's see, I'll call that dxy uh, is equal to the square root of uh, 9... Nope negative 3 minus 1 all squared plus 9 minus 8 yeah all squared actually distance formula doesn't matter as much as slope as far as getting the sequence correct because these all get squared anyway and become positive square root of negative 4 all squared plus 1 squared uh, which notice these numbers are actually the vertical and horizontal distances as seen and that's going to be the square root of 16 plus 1 or the square root of 17. If you do the other one you as well you'd see it's the same. I don't want to spend too much time doing distance formula since yeah we've got a we've got a test today. Also notice that both of these are congruent triangles. Uh, you could say by side angle side so these distances are the same right. Pythagorean theorem would work out the same as well, even though we haven't seen Pythagorean theorem yet. Yeah, uh, so although I give you pictures of these coordinate figures, uh, yeah, I do want to see some formulaic uh, derivations of your conclusions. Uh, so yeah, you're going to need yeah midpoint, distance, slope formulas. Uh, let's see, find the measure of each angle in the isosceles trapezoid. Uh, turns out there was the isosceles trapezoid base angles theorem, so these were both 82 degrees. Uh, then, because these are parallel lines cut by a transversal, the consecutive interior angles theorem would suggest that this is, what, 98 degrees? Hmm? Yeah, those are going to be supplemental uh, to the tether. Uh, also, these are of their own types base angles i could have also defined those as being equal to each other and then said x plus x plus 82 plus 82 equals 360 and yeah you tried some other routes as well so good old trapezoids uh it also turned out that mid segments in trapezoids were the average of the bases ah who would have thought who would have thought so that means seven uh, or actually, I'll write it this way. The average of x and 10, I just made up my own variable there. Uh, so add them up, divide by 2 should equal 7. Double both sides. All right, x plus 10 is equal to 14. And subtract 10 from both sides, x equals 4. 
Uh, right, which 4 is 3 away from 7, 10 is 3 away from 7. It, it'd be the average. All right, let's see. Uh, find the lengths of the mid-segment of the trapezoid. Um, so that's going to be a double midpoint formula, right? If I could find the midpoint of this leg and the midpoint of this leg, which I can kind of do graphically, but like I said on the test, I want you to be able to do it with formulas. But you could kind of like check your work the other way. So let's see, the midpoint of AD uh, would be the average of the X's and the average of the Y's, right? So I'm using A and D here. Add them up. Uh, I get 2 over 2 is 1, 10 over 2 is 5, over 1, up 5. Notice is, in fact, where that point lands. And then if I do the same thing here, uh, I guess I'll show you kind of a graphical way to do it. If you look at the rise over run between these two, uh, this is up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and over 4. If I half both of those and I go up 3 over 2, that'll actually land me at the midpoint as well. Uh, so that's kind of like a graphical way to do it. Semi-slope related, but we don't want to reduce that slope. All right. Uh, so the, uh, this midpoint happens to be at 10, negative 1. And then if I want the length, I could use the distance formula uh, D is equal to the square root of, uh, one minus 10 all squared plus five minus negative one all squared, negative nine squared. Let's see, rip plus six square. Oh, man, my symbols are falling apart. It's all right. I'm pretty sure this is the last one that requires me to do so many formulas. Uh, square root of 81 plus 36. Uh, so that's going to be 117 is the the distance here. Now, what else could you tell me about this mid-segment? How would that relate to any other distances on this? Yeah, it's the average of the two bases. So technically, if I wanted to avoid this midpoint strategy, if the only formula I knew was distance formula, which we all know that's not the case because I hardly know that one, uh, I could just find the distance of CD and AB, add them together, divide by two. That also would have worked. Ooh. All right. Aha. Kites. Uh, we had a property regarding kites that there is exactly one pair of opposite angles congruent. So this is uh, 110 degrees. That looks like 1100. There we go. That's better. Uh, and then these two angles are most likely going to just be unrelated to each other. Actually, if they were both congruent, it would cease to be a kite, and then it would be a parallelogram. So, if I want to find this remaining angle measure, let's call it x. I'll say x plus 110 plus 110 plus 60 is equal to 360. 220, yeah, 280 equals 360. Yeah, subtract 280 from both sides. I think I agree. x equals 80. Well done, well done. Let's see. Oh, I've got one more. This is a good one. I like 23. Uh, give the most specific name for the quadrilateral. Could someone walk me through some logic here? All the sides are congruent, so what shape does that make it? How do we prove it? Well, all sides being congruent, I know, puts it in the parallelogram family by parallelogram opposite sides theorem, right? Uh, also, because it's a parallelogram with opposite sides, uh, it's a rhombus. Uh, since all four sides are congruent, right? Uh, this right angle, what could I do with that? Actually, I just realized this is a converse. Yeah, these have to add up to 180. Okay, so therefore it's a rectangle. And then because it is both rectangular and rhombangular, man, that's such a good word. It's a square. So yeah.
All right. Uh, thanks for watching, Internet friends. Bye-bye.